This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman in New York, joined by Democracy Now! co-host Nermeen Sheikh. Hi, Nermeen. Hi, Amy, and welcome to our listeners and viewers across the country and around the world. Antony Blinken has arrived in Niger, becoming the first U.S. Secretary of State to ever visit the former French colony. Blinken's visit comes as the United States is openly vying with China and Russia for influence across Africa. Niger has become a critical U.S. ally in the Sahel region, which has seen recent military coups in Mali and Burkina Faso. In 2019, the U.S. opened a new drone base in uh, the capital of Agadez. The U.S. also has about 800 military personnel in Niger. The U.S. military presence in Niger made headlines in 2017, when four U.S. special forces and five soldiers from Niger were killed in an ambush. Niger also remains one of the poorest nations in the world. In the United Nations Development Program's most recent Human Development Index, Niger ranks 189th of 191 countries, with only neighboring Chad and nearby newly formed war-ravaged South Sudan below it. 80 percent of Niger lies within the Sahara Desert. Life expectancy is only 60 years old, and the mean education level for its 25 million citizens is only two years. Secretary of State Blinken arrived in Niger after a trip to Ethiopia, which we'll talk about later in the program. But we'll begin now with two guests. Here in New York, Stephanie Sable is with us, a co-director of Cost of War Project at Brown University's Watson Institute for International and Public Affairs. She's an anthropologist who's researched U.S. militarism in West Africa and beyond. She just recently returned from Niger. We're also joined by Kumba Toure. She is chair of the board for Trust Africa, and an ambassador for Africans rising for unity, justice, peace and dignity, a writer and activist based in Senegal, but is joining us from Washington. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Um, <clears throat> let's begin with Stephanie Sable. Um, if you can start off by talking about Niger right now, why you believe Secretary of State, uh, in the first Secretary of State visit to uh, Niger, is there, what is the U.S. interest in Niger? Yeah, this is a really significant visit. Um, it is a significant moment. France has just recently pulled out of neighboring Burkina Faso. Um, so it's a moment when uh, Western powers are kind of figuring out what the next steps are in the region. Niger is one of the last strongholds of U.S security partnerships in the region, um, which is increasingly spiraling into violence and chaos, um, led by some of militant groups affiliated with al-Qaeda and ISIS. And the U.S. sees Niger as one of its strongest allies in this region, which um, the U.S. positions as really one, uh, one of the latest fronts in the ongoing post-9-11 wars, what, what George W. Bush called the War on Terror. Uh, contrary to what many Americans think, this war is ongoing, and this is one of the latest fronts. And this visit to Niger is really a signal of, in, in part, how important strategically uh, Niger is for the United States. Stephanie, could you uh, explain uh, the context of this? Uh, how is it that not just Niger, but the broader Sahel region, uh, became such a focus for the U.S., and why the global war of, on terror now appears to be concentrated there, with a large number of uh, terrorist incidents, according to the Global Terrorism Index, almost 50 percent of all terrorist uh, terrorism-related deaths occurred in the Sahel region last year. That's right. Yeah, the region be began kind of spiraling into cycles of violence in 2012, uh, really in 2012, although a little bit before then, um, when Mali was politically destabilized in the north. Um, rebels that were formerly fighting for Gaddafi in Libya uh, looted his weapons stocks and came down into Mali, where there was a separatist movement. Um, and this, this uh, has led to kind of this spiraling cycle in which um, these militant groups have been gaining ground. Governments in the region, aided by uh, U.S. training, assistance, funding, equipment, 
have been really waging their own wars on terror. And this violence, the government-sponsored violence, has been one of the factors that's contributed to these intensifying uh, spirals of violence. So people, it's, you know, blowback, right? So a lot of, a lot of recruitment to these militant groups uh, is coming in retaliation against uh, government forces that, in some cases, are indiscriminately um, targeting certain ethnic groups. Um, and uh, so it, it's, it's really one of these situations where there's a lot of poverty, there's a lot of corruption, people feel abandoned by the central governments, uh, the government is responding with force, um, and these situations are just getting worse and worse. Uh, Kumba Turi, if you could also uh, respond to uh, Secretary of State, State uh, Blinken's visit to Niger uh, and to the region, uh, the first of a Secretary of State, an American Secretary of State, to the region, the significance of the visit uh, and what you'd like to see come out of it. Thank you so much for, for having me here. Um, the first thing that I would say is that um, there is definitely a, a shift uh, that is that is needed in in relationship between you know the U.S. <clears throat> and African African countries, and I and I see that you know with this visit and before the meeting where the different leaders of African country were invited here in the U.S. That is clearly uh, where where we we we're going, but the truth is in this region. Um, everyone comes for their own interests, and the U.S. included. Uh, people are there for, um, you know, the natural resources. People are there for political influence. And um, different uh, nations elbowing each other for power uh, with total disregard uh, to the people who live on those, on, on those land. Uh, I, I believe for, for new relationship to really shape uh, Africa needs to be looked at as a continent where there are human beings, not just a place where, um, you know, uh, it's for, for power gain and, and, and for uh, exploitation. Uh, Kumbaturi, if you can talk about the issues that are um, being faced by the continent, how you see the Ukraine war affecting them, uh, issues from energy transition uh, to global health, um, and how this visit by the Secretary of State of the United States is viewed around Africa? Yeah, I would say that uh, most people on the continent are not directly connected to, to this visit, um, you know, the U.S. Secretary of State is is meeting with with a certain level. It's high level meetings, and it's meeting with uh, most of the time leadership that even people on the continent don't always uh, connect with or or recognize as 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 such. Most people uh, are are abandoned by by the, the, the their governments. Um, they 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 figure out their lives for for, for themselves, and we are yet. To, to see a, a type of a cooperation or connection uh, with African people that, that really benefit African, that look at uh, um, people's health, that look at um, their education, that, that, that look at uh, what, what people need in terms of mobility. Uh, what is talked about is, is about war, about arms, about training military. And that's not the, the fundamental need of, of, of the people. Um, and yes, um, right now, with, with the war, um, you know, in, in, in Ukraine, um, that also is another power, uh, I would say, power game going on, because the truth is, right now, um, the U.S. and the EU are looking at African countries to align themselves to, you know, against, against Russia. Uh, which some of these countries are hesitant of doing because, you know, for South Africa, for example, having received support, you know, the ANC before, um, they, 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 for now, are, you know, really speaking in a neutral tone. And there are other countries also on the continent that are uh, not as quick as jumping just and saying yes to, you know, whatever the U.S. and um, the, the EU is saying. So right now, I think that um, this visit is, is more about really uh, uh, replacing 
um, you know, uh, the, the, the U.S. Uh, in, in front of uh, uh, all the powers, whether it's China, Russia, Turkey, Japan, everyone has uh, now a, 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 a meeting or set up something to, to, to bring African leaders to, to, be, to be with them. Stephanie, if you could respond to what uh, Kumba said, in particular, talk about uh, the different countries that are uh, vying for influence in the Sahel region, and also the proliferation of small arms uh, across the region, uh, the increase in uh, smuggling, trafficking of small arms, and whose hands those arms are falling into, the various armed groups that are uh, fighting uh, in the region now. Now, and the role of the U.S. Right. So there are lots of countries in um, in the West African Sahel region who are involved in training Nigerian forces and providing uh, what they call security assistance. Um, the Germans and French and uh, <coughs> Italians. Um, there are also concerns about the Vag the Russian Wagner Group that is um, spreading in influence, particularly in Mali, and there are rumors that it might be gaining a little bit of influence in uh, Burkina Faso, and they've been accused of committing atrocities in the Malian War on Terror. Um, so it, it's really surprising. When I was in the airport in uh, in Niamey, which is the capital of Niger, um, and, you know, and, and Agadez, which is, as you mentioned, where the U.S. Um, drone base is based. Uh, a couple some hundreds of miles into the desert to the north, um, you you see you know you see foreigners around. There's just a very I've I've been working in West Africa for um, 20 years and and I've never seen so many kind of um, Western military types contractors and things. The U.S. says it has about 800 soldiers posted in Niger, but that's doesn't re convey at all the the kind of numbers of contractors who are coming in to do trainings and um, and the numbers of, uh, of special forces operations, like the people who are coming in and out. Um, so it's really a, a significant operation. It's significant um, in, for, for other countries as well, um, Germany included and, uh, and others. Um, and this region, as you were, as you were mentioning, has become a, um, a hub for illicit trafficking, not just of small arms, but also drugs and, and people. There's a big um, uh, migrant uh, smuggling route uh, in the desert of Niger. So it's, it's, a, it's a central point in the desert. You can, you can picture um, Agadez, where we were, was this, for hundreds of years, has been this trading post between coastal West Africa and the desert to the north. Um, and so it's, it's been really important on trade routes for centuries. Um, and now a, a lot of what's going on is that these um, militant groups who are, um, are saying that they're affiliated with uh, is the Islamic State and al-Qaeda um, are essentially a lot of people are saying, you know, these, these guys are, are, are bandits. They're, they're criminals who are um, kind of donning the mantle of the, this, you know, so-called terrorism to, uh, to smuggle these goods and, and profit. I wanted to ask you, Professor Savell, in a moment we're going to be talking about this 20th anniversary of the U.S. invasion of Iraq which really began uh, with um, the Bush administration uh, going after Niger, uh, or rather going after Saddam Hussein, saying he got uranium from Niger. That's how Niger oh. came into the consciousness of so many Americans. It was a false claim. The late Joe Wilson was sent there to investigate. He said it was false. But talk about how the U.S. has used Niger over the years and what effect that had, even 20 years later. Yeah, the U.S. began, you know, I think it's, it's important to situate U.S. actions in Niger, um, particularly in the wake of 9-11, the Sahel region became a kind of hidden um, and not, you know, major um, focus of U.S. counterterrorism activities. Um, so there, there was the Pan-Sahel Initiative that became the Trans-Sahara Counterterrorism Partnership. And that, that started, you know, right after 
um, in 2002, 2003, 2004. Um, and since all these, all these years, um, the U.S. has been, just been channeling a lot of uh, equipment and, and money for military operations. Um, even back before this region had much of a terrorist threat at all, this was um, what this cohort in that Bush administration, uh, they were acting according to the doctrine of preemptive war, wherein, you know, th the slightest possibility of a terror attack warranted any kind of preventative action. We saw that happening uh, all over the world. So this is just one region. Uh, and and you can—I I have a map that I've put together of all the places. There's about 85 countries in the world where the U.S. is engaged in some sort of counterterrorism activity. And my research in, in the West African Sahel was really uh, kind of asking, well, what, what does it mean? How do we zoom in to this kind of data point on this map? And, and even though it's a kind of a drop in the bucket in terms of the mass, massive Pentagon spending uh, on counterterrorism, uh, what does this mean for these countries? And so a country like Niger is getting millions of dollars of, a year in security assistance from the U.S., and that's really significant. And what that's done is it's created this framework that the appropriate way to fight the problem of terror attacks is with a war. Uh, historically, research shows that there's lots of other ways to address, for governments to address the problem of terror attacks. You can treat it as a policing problem. You can treat it as a matter of political negotiation, so incorporating militants into the legitimate political sphere, um, addressing the, the roots of people's grievances, primarily the fact that people are, are, you know, needing jobs, they're needing to eat, they're just furious at corruption, they're furious at kind of being ignored by uh, governments government policy. Um, all of this stuff is driving the, the unrest. And if you treat that as a war problem and you send soldiers in and you start, you know, indiscriminately attacking certain groups of people, because, again, just like in other parts of the world, we're seeing certain groups of people um, who already bear the brunt of prejudice, um, so particularly like the Fulani ethnic group that are traditionally herders across West Africa and Muslim for centuries. Um, they are bearing the brunt of a lot of government policies across the region. Um, so we're, we're seeing this war on terror, the, the consequences of this mentality that has been introduced and supported with all this money and weapons and political rhetoric over the years. We're, we're seeing the consequences of that play out. Kumba, you spoke earlier uh, about the different countries that are uh, in the region, in the Sahel region, uh, because of the resources in the region. So if you could explain what those resources are—energy uh, reserves, gold, uh, et cetera—and also the impact of the climate crisis in the Sahel region, which is reportedly heating at one and a half times the rate uh, of the global average. Yes. Um, you know, if we start with Niger, um, it is uranium. Uh, the issue is uranium. Why are, you know, why is everybody so interested in a small country that is, you know, desertic? Um, it's not because there is, you know, there is love there. Uh, the issue and, and is always about resources, and it always has been uh, for, for, for the, Af the whole African continent. And it's not something new. Uh, you take it back all the way, you know, from slavery to colonization to this day, um, uh, countries of the Western, you know, hemisphere, whether it's Europe, um, uh, U.S., Canada, people, um, these countries have come to Africa for the resources. And today, uh, the, the main resources that, that people are looking at are um, energetic resources, it's mineral resources, uh, of course, for arms, for technology, um, and, and, yeah, and for, for energy. But what, 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 what I really want to, sh to, 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 to convey is that it is about time that we, we, we look at the lives of people, that cooperation is about supporting, you know, small farmers to produce, um, you know, um, uh, food that, 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 that helps people live healthy lives. It, it's about looking at health systems, uh, not, of course, supporting big pharmaceutical, but looking at health systems that actually touches people. Um, and uh, 
to, if we really want to build peace, it's not about um, arming and rearming uh, as much as possible people and, 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 and excluding uh, the majority of, of, of population. We need different relationships um, between our countries and, and the U.S., and it will be—part uh, of it needs to come through people to people. I am here traveling in the U.S., just came from Selma. Alabama that, that has been tornado struck. But for 30 years, there's been connection between regular people in West Africa and uh, people in the U.S., uh, mainly from, from the, you know, African-American communities. We need to get at the bottom of, of, of this. Um, relationships start with respect. And, um, you know, the, the, the world has been functioning on, on white, white supremacy, uh, valuing white life, valuing people's life, and also valuing the fact that accumulation and profit is, uh, you know, the, the, the call of the day is what needs to be done. And we need to change that. Kumba Tori, we want to thank you so much for being with us, chair of the board for Trust Africa, ambassador for Africans Rising, a writer and activist based in Senegal, here in the United States. Uh, Stephanie Savel, uh, Savelle is a co-director of the Cost of War Project at Brown University's Watson Institute for International and Public Affairs. She's an anthropologist who's researched U.S. militarism in West Africa and beyond, just back from Niger.